Good morning to all. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for lending us bread to be here this morning to celebrate this special occasion, founding day of this fine institution, the H. Levity Stout Community College. We thank you for allowing our college to see 30 years. As we celebrate 30 years of existence, we thank you for the founding members who casted the vision to establish this institution, in particular, the one to whom the institution bears his name, the late Honorable Hamilton Laverty Stout. We also thank you for those who carried out the mandates of that vision, which gave birth to this needed establishment in our territory. Thus, we thank you for all the past governments, college leaders, faculty, and staff who continued the work to ensure that this institution continued to grow over the many years. And so, Lord, we pray for the current government, college leaders, faculty, and staff, that we will work in unison as we strive to ensure that the HLSCC continues to grow by leaps and bounds, and that the vision and mission lives on so that our students are equipped with the knowledge and skills to be lifelong learners prepared for their career of choice and who are ready to contribute to building up our territory. Finally, Lord, we pray that you will bless the proceedings of this founding day, that everything will run smoothly and bless the H. Levity South Community College as we celebrate 30 years. We ask this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. God save our gracious queen, long live a noble queen, God save our queen. Send her victorious, happy and glorious, long to reign over us, God save our Queen. Out of the huts of history's pain, our ancestors bled and died. But with strength and willpower, we overcame to restore Virgin Island's pride. To preserve the beauty, we devised a plan to retain ownership of this precious land. Educating your people is the golden key to maintain the success of this territory. Oh, how radiant are your daughters and how wealthy are your sons. Your beaches boast your beauty and your success is second to none. Green and brilliant are your hillsides. They replenish our hopes and pride. Oh, beautiful Virgin Island, your qualities can never be denied. May God richly bless this territory. May we ask three things of thee. Courage for our great leaders, that they may rule our destiny. We ask for wisdom for all people, that they may live in harmony. And understanding for our children, that they may cherish this legacy. Oh, how radiant are your daughters, and how wealthy are your sons. Your beaches boast 
see your beauty and your success is second to none. Green and brilliant are your hillsides. They replenish our hopes and pride. Oh, beautiful Virgin Islands, your qualities can never be denied. Oh, beautiful Virgin Islands, your qualities can never be denied. Speaker of the House of Assembly, the Honorable Julian Willock, Deputy Premier and Minister for Health and Social Development, Honorable Calvin Malone, Minister for Education, Culture, Youth Affairs, Fisheries and Agriculture, Dr. the Honorable Natalia D. Wheatley, Minister for Natural Resources, Labor and Immigration, Honorable Vincent Wheatley, leader of opposition was here, but I guess he left. Is he still here? Okay, Deputy Speaker of the House of Assembly, Honorable Neville Smith, Junior Minister of Trade and Economic Development, Honorable Shireen Flex Charles, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Natural Resources, Labor and Immigration, Dr. Marcia Potter, Chairman of the Board of Governors of the Ish Lavati Stout Community College, Mr. John Samuel. Deputy Chairman of the Board of Governors for the HLSCC, Mrs. Fiona Forbes Vanterpool. Acting President of the College, Dr. Richard Georges. Acting Vice President, Dr. Luvon Baptiste. Faculty and staff of the H. Laverty Stout Community College, other distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, I believe because we've had you waiting so long, the morning is very faint, but I said good morning. And we are sorry that we kept you waiting so long. Let me say thanks to Mr. Estridge and Ms. Beer Smith for the invocation and national anthem and territorial song respectively. Today is a great day. It's another day that we've come to celebrate another significant milestone in the life of this institution. To give you your words of welcome and opening remarks, I now invite Deputy Chairman of the Board of Governors here at the H. Laverty Stout Community College, Mrs. Fiona Forbes Vanterpool to come at this time. Mrs. Vanterpool. Good morning, and welcome to the 30th anniversary of HLSEC and to our founding day. We are happy that you have come today to celebrate such an auspicious occasion with us. I am delighted to join all of you this morning to celebrate the founding of HLSCC. 30 years ago, this college was founded, a very, very short time in history. And Founding Day provides us with an opportunity to reflect briefly on the college's history, highlight important accomplishments, and to discuss our aspirations of this institution for the future. When I reflect on the challenges that the founders of HLSCC must have encountered when the institution was started, I'm in awe of their vision and their tenacity. I have tried to imagine that moment in history, a small, primarily agricultural nation with hopes of increasing its tourism sector, responding to the beaconing call of the financial services sector, and dealing with limited resources. Our founding fathers had to make choices about their community needs. And what their community would need most 
over the decades to come. They decided ultimately that an institution of higher learning was the best way to help our people improve their lives, and so they set out to build an institution that would last and that would make the biggest difference for the citizens of the Virgin Islands. Over the past 30 years, the HLSCC has seen an increase in course offerings and student enrollment, the establishment of a sister campus on the island of Virgin Gorda, the development of a culinary arts center, a regional center for applied marine studies, and the learning resource center. In 2015, HLSCC became the last international tertiary institution to be accredited by the renowned Middle States Commission on Higher Education. One of the institution's most, most noteworthy accomplishments, in my opinion, has been the development of relationships with other institutions of higher learning via articulation agreements and memorandums of understanding. As a result of these relationship, relationships, HLSCC has been able to offer degree programs beyond the associate's level, namely bachelor's and master's degrees and also postgraduate certificates and diplomas. In so doing, BV Islanders were able to gain further education and training to advance themselves from lower to middle management positions to senior positions within both the public and the private sector. And this is a huge accomplishment for such a young institution. We have also witnessed the advent of free tertiary education for all citizens of the BVI. This is the vision of HLSEC founders, equal access to higher education for people of these Virgin Islands, recognizing that as a nation, we are nothing without our people and that our people can do nothing without the opportunity to develop and advance themselves. 30 years later, we still have much to learn from the founders and their vision of this institution and these Virgin Islands. We must focus, as they did, on the long term to ensure that this institution continues to fulfill its mandate to provide quality higher education and lifelong learning that is responsive to the changing needs of this community, the global economy, and evolving technology. We must also ensure that HLSEC continues to develop, to develop and strengthen relationships with other institutions of higher learning regionally and internationally to offer both undergrad and postgraduate degrees locally. We must also review and revamp our present curriculum to ensure that students are being taught not only core subjects, but also intellectual and practical skills such as critical thinking and analysis, creative thinking, teamwork, oral and written communication skills. We must continue to dialogue with the public and private sector about their employment needs to ensure that we provide courses and training that will equip HLSEC graduates to meet those immediate workforce needs. We must also implement e-learning initiatives which will de decrease our reliance on traditional classroom settings and introduce a larger audience to HLSCC. We must ensure that we implement higher entry requirements for persons wishing to enroll at this institution. Persons wishing to benefit from free education, from the free education offered at HLSCC must appreciate that even though the education is free, does not make it cheap or without value. As we educate future generation of leaders, HLSEC must be at the forefront of conversations and initiatives that address critical issues of national importance, such as climate change, renewable energy, waste management, and disaster preparedness. Focusing on the long term also means that HLSCC 
must explore multiple streams for funding this institution. We must recognize that HLSEC is not only an institution of higher learning, but it is also a business of going concern. And as a business, the institution must develop business strategies to expand its financial resources beyond the government's coffers. I am proud, proud to be a part of the legacy of this institution, first as a student and now as a deputy chairperson of the Board of Governors. I therefore challenge myself and the Board of Governors to focus on the long term in our governance and administration of this institution and also in the development of policies, development and implementation of policies that will shape the future of this institution. Ladies and gentlemen, 30 years ago, at a time of great hardship and great hope, our leaders, the founders of HLSEC, had the courage to identify hard problems and found the fortitude to try to solve them. We must continue to build on the foundation that our forefathers have laid. Success is never final. We are not yet done. In the words of Aristotle, excellence is never an accident. It is always the result of high intentions, sincere effort, and intelligent execution. Happy Founders Day, and God bless. Thank you. I recognize in the audience, in the midst of the lights, former Associate Vice President of the college, Dr. Christine Hodge, say a special welcome to you this morning. <clears throat> and to all the faculty present. It is indeed a privilege and a joy to be here as your chairperson this morning. As Mrs. Vantipal was speaking and as I look through the program, I'm seeing persons who have been impacted in many ways by the college. As I was behind, I said, Bria, 30 years ago, you weren't around. But here she is today. She was a former student. And we have our president now. But many persons who have gone through this institution and are serving, as Fiona said, in various capacities throughout our territory or public service. 30 years ago, when we opened the doors at the Omaha building, I was associated with the college at that time as a lecturer in typing, one of my first students, Dr. Allison Flax Archer, is now the Secretary General of UNESCO. And I see Monique was one of my former students. She's here in the HR department. So the college has been impacting lives. I do remember the halls, walking through the halls of the Omaha building at the time, and there was a certain excitement because we started a college. And then the, on the other hand, there was skepticism. Is it going to work? But 30 years later, the college is still here and making a difference. And for that, we should be grateful. I now invite the acting president, Dr. Richard Georges, to come and give remarks, following which he will lead in the special tribute and unveiling of the painting for the late Honorable Ralph T. O'Neill, OBE, Chairman Emeritus, Dr. Georges. Today is the 30th anniversary of this institution's founding. And we are gathered here today to celebrate that moment when vision begets action. When the word is made solid. With that in mind, let us remind ourselves that if we only see what is present, we condemn ourselves to a cycle of repeating what was past. But if we dare to dream, to see what may be, only then are we able to transcend what is. Three decades ago, our founding chairman established our institution and planted a seed that would transform the lives of thousands of Virgin Islanders and build the foundation for a modern BVI. 
Two decades ago, I was one of those who would be transformed, preparing to begin a journey that would bring me full circle two decades later. Now, at the same institution that built me up, I have an opportunity to return the favor. I know that many people at the recognition of an anniversary are inclined to look to the past, and rightfully so. We have come a long way. And it is imperative that we are able to look at the path we have walked and the obstacles we have overcome in order to develop a full appreciation of our life thus far. But, as the old adage goes, we look to the past to better equip ourselves for the future. So, to the future, I will look. As the college begins its fourth decade, the administration and the Board of Governors are committed to positioning the institution to make real its mission, to become a regional institution of choice. To accomplish this, we have established four institutional priorities that outline the areas that we have chosen to focus on and develop. Indulge me if you will. Priority one is student learning and success. Here, we have committed to better align our programs with the demands of the workforce and the realities of the local economy. We have begun to invest more intentionally into career education programs like marine and maritime training, culinary and hospitality studies, renewable energy, and construction management. You will have seen, no doubt, the, the government's generous investment in marine and maritime, and we are nearing now the, the renovations to our culinary arts center, just in time to welcome the first three international culinary students since before Irma and Maria. We will begin working towards reviewing and streamlining our academic programs for quality and effectiveness for the best possible student learning outcomes while improving and expanding our support services and co-curricular offerings. Priority two is institutional image and community relations. You may have also noticed that we have been working with assistance from the government on our governance model. And we now have provisions for two full vice presidents and representation on the board of governors for students and faculty. We have been steadily building relationships with other educational institutions, not only for the benefit of graduates who transfer, but also for the college itself and the wider community it serves. In the last two years, we have signed memoranda of understanding that reduced tuition at the University of the Virgin Islands, that guaranteed admission and secured scholarships at Johnson and Wales, and that has laid the foundation for distance learning and research at Park University and Acadia University, respectively. Currently, we are engaged in discussions with a number of other institutions to look at collaborations in the fields of sustainable development, marine biology, agri-science, and further maritime training. Our brand development is in full swing as we begin the review and update of our website and all promotional materials. Our team is hard at work on producing a full slate of content that speaks to the local community and the region about our mission and share, share stories of our students' success. Priority number three is accountability, sustainability, and stewardship. And the college has realized that it must take steps to, to solidify its financial footing before its vision of the future can be made a reality. As such, it cannot be overstated how valuable the government's transfer of 134 acres is to the college's ability to realize the founder's vision. I am elated to say that we received the, the documents from the land commissioner yesterday, and they will be signed imminently. Hear, hear. <laughs> Aside from that, the college is actively aware of its duty to the territory to be a, resp a responsible steward to the resources it controls. And we have undergone steps to ensure that the college always represents money well spent. We are exploring some simple steps, even from moving from halogen to LED lighting, 
to installing solar technologies to reduce both our carbon footprint and our utility bill. We have recently approved an environmental policy at the college's cabinet that will reduce our use of paper and plastics and encourage environmentally responsible practices throughout our campuses. The college's final priority is enrollment and retention. We must reach out now to those individuals who may have thought that college was not for them. It may be that they are not inclined to pursue an associate degree, but it is now our responsibility to create the programs that speak to the needs and interests of our people. The interests and energy that surrounds our Marine Professional Training Program is testament to this. Matt and the team at the Marine Center have created a template by which we can boost the college's enrollment and its impact on the community at the same time. Indeed, we have already begun planning parallel programs to be delivered in a similar fashion. We have also rolled out our digital learning initiative, moving the majority of our textbooks into eBooks and utilizing the learning platforms Cengage Unlimited and Moodle, along with Microsoft 365 applications and research databases like JSTOR and EBSCOhost. These tools improve our ability to reach and interact with our students, and we hope to be able to utilize them to build our presence on all of the islands of the territory. This initiative will not only improve access to college for all Virgin Islanders, but also prepare our students to become full digital citizens of the global workplace. Here now, I may have a more radical view than others, but as Vladimir Lenin said, one must always try to be as radical as reality. And the reality is the population of the BVI is not enough to grow the college into what Lavity Stout envisioned. But you see that is a good thing because our mission is to become a regional center of choice. It means that we now must start to look further afield than our own shores. The truth is we have not yet begun to do so with gusto Yet we find international students here already. They have found us. There's already a tradition of Eastern Caribbean students coming here to study, in particular, culinary and hospitality. And in 2016, the OECS named HLSCC as the center of excellence in the region for marine and maritime training. We must now work to build the institution into the preeminent institution of learning in this corner of the world, period. We must build an institution that attracts students from throughout the territory, but also from throughout the region and the wider world. This means continuing to invest in digital education. It means streamlining our degree options. It means developing our career education programs. It means building dorms and a larger campus community. Three decades ago, our founding chairman built the foundations upon which the lives of many Virgin Islanders were built. I would not be the man I am today without enrolling first as a student here. H. Lavity Stout found people like Honorable Ralph T. O'Neill, like Dr. Charles Wheatley, and many others who would become champions of the college. Those of us who have passed through these hallowed halls owe all those great people a debt of gratitude for their service. And I challenge and admonish all who are within the bounds of my voice today to in their own special way become champions of this college's future. In the decades to come, we can only pray that we leave the type of legacy at this college that will compel others to say the same about us. Thank you very much. At this time, we will have a, a brief tribute to our Chairman Emeritus, Honorable Ralph T. O'Neill. My, my first recollection of Mr. O'Neill must have been in the late 40s. Um, he, he was on a visit to the school along with, with, some, with some other members of, fam of his family. He was a, a tall, 
gentleman in a khaki type short pants. Having lived very close to Mr. O'Neill's mother, at least this is the time when he was just Jack. He was called Jack, not even Ralph, and his brother was Jim. I remember him then. They looked after their cattle and walked about like the rest of us in our dirt roads, sometimes without shoes, and did their chores because then people taught their children to work. And that's why he's such a hard worker and working for all of us because he had been taught and I would encourage other people to teach their children to work. I can recall seeing him again in the early 50s, the beginning of the 50s, when he came to the song to replace Brigada Flex, who was the headmaster of the, the Methodist um, Elementary School here. And of course, in those days, the song community was very isolated, especially in terms of transportation. Yes, I recall him living in a little house just opposite my father's house. It's a little house about 16 feet long, mm -hmm. 8 feet wide. And at that time, there was no electricity. People used just a lamp. There was no running water. There was an outdoor bathroom, yes, yes. It was just the basic things that um, a person could use to get by with. But um, that did not deter him. Yeah, he was um, determined to make it, and he made it. In those early days, there wasn't no water catchment facilities that was used for storing water. Um, while he was here, he saw the need for a proper water catchment facility. And so he encouraged the government of that day to build a system to the school. So by 1954, that system was built. Even though Mr. O'Neill had a house, there were times when he would walk up to the valley, from the valley to the song on a, on, a, on a Monday morning. Someone had to go, to the, go down to the valley on a Friday afternoon to, to collect the house and bring him over so that Mr. O'Neill would be able to, to ride back down to the valley. Then he had Walter Moe Creaky, Reginald Reimer, and all these old gentlemen who he made his friends and his, his Friday afternoon would be taken up, speaking to them on his way to the valley. So, so, this, so what this means is that he would be arriving in the valley sometime in the night. Here we are, after all these years, face to face, heart to heart, and I loved you from the start. And I never thought that we'd be standing here after all these years. Here we are with another song to sing. All these days pass us by. As we watched our young years fly But I'm still the one Who shares your hopes and fears After all these years After all, all these years We still reach out One to another After all That I am here with after all these years And I've loved all these days All we've been through And I just want to say I'm so glad it's been with you Here's one more song from the heart for the laughter and the tears After all these years After all, oh, all these years We still reach out One to another After all
So we, we have a man then with, with, with a tremendous experience, a man who knows the, the past, and a man who can take us forward to the future with, with great hope. Because he know where he know what it is to be poor, he know what it is to be in poverty, he know what it is to see a community. They were, they were yearning for change, yearning to be developed, and, 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 and were obstructed because some, some basic facilities that was needed wasn't there. And he having worked hard to put these facilities in place, he had the pleasure of living to see the, the, some, the positive change in the community. He had, he, had, he had the pleasure to see some of those persons whose hands he held, who he taught in the, in the school system, develop and grow and, and are now contributing to the elevation and better development of these islands and, and the Bojangara community in particular. We feel certain that the way forward is to give Mr. O'Neill another opportunity to contain the leadership for, of this country and indeed to be elected as the, the district representative for the 9th electoral district. We'll be doing justice to a man who has given so much for this country, whose love and affection has helped us to build a better country. And as a result of that, we can see a bright and prosperous future for these Virgin Islands. After all, oh, all these years, we still reach out one to another. After all, oh, all these years, you're still the one that I am here. Memories, memories, memories. I now invite the Honorable Premier, the Honorable Minister for Education, Acting President, to the stage for the unveiling of the painting of the late Honorable Ralph T. O'Neill. Chairman, Mr. Samuel, please. All right, as we unveil the painting of our, the late Honorable Ralph T. O'Neill, OBE Chairman Emeritus. All right, let me acknowledge the artist, one of our very own, Mr. Ruben Van Tepoel, former Speaker of the House of Assembly. <laughs> Dr. Georges, thank you very much for your remarks. As you spoke, all I kept hearing, the word that I heard was the word progress, and not just progress in initial caps, pro progress in all capital letters. Truly, over the years, the college has been doing great work, and we certainly look forward to the next 30 years. It is my pleasure at this time. It is my pleasure at this time to invite the Honorable Andrew A. Foy, Premier and Minister of Finance, to come and give remarks on this occasion. Honorable Foy. Hi, good day to everyone. I know that we can do better than that on this occasion. Good day, and God's blessings to everyone. This is indeed a great occasion here as we look at the 30th anniversary founding day ceremony. Biblically, we're 10 years away from a generation because in biblically, 40 years is a generation. But yet, we have helped many generations to come. And uh, I would like to recognize the, the protocol that was already established. But I'll also like to say that I think it's only fitting that we remember our founding fathers, especially those 
and um, any persons in terms of whether they are local or abroad by standing for a moment of silence for those who have passed away so that you can honor their memory. So join me in a moment of silence as we remember all of our founding fathers who have already passed on from Honorable Leith, Honorable H.S. Toad, Honorable R.T. O'Neill, and many others. Thank you. You may be seated. May their soul rest in peace. The challenges of the past were needed because without challenges, you could never truly see your fullest potential. Without challenges, you could never really see opportunities. As a matter of fact, all great things that have been invented or have been improved came as a result of a problem. It came as a result of a challenge. And when the late H.L. Stout saw the need to educate his people, beyond the secondary education came the need for the, the H.L. Stout Community College. And I happened to have just uh, returned back from college uh, just a few years after it was open. But I kept track of what was happening at that time. And there's nothing different to anything that is major that needs to be done in this territory or anywhere in the world when you're going to do something major. It was met with great obstacles. It was met with great resistance. But one of the things that I learned as I watched leaders of the past, like Honorable, the late Honorable H.L. Stout and the late R.T. O'Neill and even some who are still living, is a mathematical formula. And being that I, I love maths and science and engineering, I just love mathematical formulas. And that mathematical formula, formula is that persistence always beats resistance once the foundation and the print is based on a song principle. And that is why when you realize that you need to move forward for the better of the people of the country, you have to move forward. I can remember very clearly many resistance even since becoming premier when this whole room was filled and we, I told them we have to unite the territory. And I sat here and on the stage and there, were, it was, there was standing room only with the residents and belongers situation. And while some don't agree up to today, I understand and respect that. But why do I bring that up? Because it is impossible for us to think that how we build the BVI, we can continue to build it on our own. And not recognizing that we are now not a BVI just looked upon as the BVI. We now have to be a BVI that will be one that will link the Caribbean because the Caribbean is already here. The, the success that we're looking for at HLSCC is right in front of our very eyes. The doctor said it. We have not fully explored outward to get in students as yet, but students are coming in. I met students from Anguilla who are already come in for the culinary, who are here for the culinary program. So what I recognize and HLSCC is recognizing, and I give the acting president and the minister and the board, all of you, um, full credit is that either you create your future or your future will be created for you. And if you create your future, then you can manage where you're going. And one of the things that I do with my colleagues, and I see that Dr. Georges and Mr. Samuel, and I, I, I meet with them with some other programs have done, is that they have made sure in this college they do not major in the minor. And once you continue to do that, you will get a bachelor's, a PhD, and even a degree beyond the PhD in excellence. Just keep making sure you do not major in the minor. The future of HLSC is beyond our imagination. Because if we limit our imagination, then we can't see where HLSCC is going. The dormitories, the video conferencing, um, the training, quality training, it's going to get the job done for the people of the Virgin Islands. This will not only be an institution for learning, but it will be a tourism industry for education. Because people come from all walks of life here, whether it is to get a degree, whether it is to get training. And we are strategically positioned 
the BVI is not where it is geographically by accident. It is where it is because God placed us here as a gem to link the Caribbean in trade, in education, economics, and many other areas. And what we have to do now is make sure that we continue to unite and move forward. I see HLSCC offering bachelors uh, in all areas, masters and doctorates. And one of the things that I told Dr. Georges and a few members of the board when I met them is just start very simple. Find one or two areas that you're very good at and be very good at it and everything else will fall in place. And believe it or not, when you have improved the marine uh, program, maritime training, it is such a program now that, that when I was speaking with the, the instructors, I understand that it's filled all the way up into 2021. There's a waiting list. That tells me that something is being done right. And I have to be given a round of applause for that. And HLSCC also partnering right now with the BVI Electricity Corporation and Power 52 in, in, in um, about a week and a half or so, we will be launching um, with them in the Premier's office and uh, Ministry of Education we all, and Unite BVI. We're all linking together to launch the training for those who want to be trained in renewable energy. Now, that in itself needed a round of applause. Not because I'm premier directing you to clap. <laughs> but what we are doing here is making sure that our industry does not come to the BVI and the people left behind following. Here we're making sure HLSCC is taking the lead by partnering with all of us to make sure now that we train our people from before the industry starts, before the legislations are passed, before uh, the, the uh, amendment to allow duty-free energy renewable energy um, apparatus and, and different mechanisms. So that persons now can be able to shift and repurpose and retool themselves to get ready for what's coming for the future. That's what a college does. Your tomorrow has to begin today. And the to your tomorrow is always going to be brighter than your yesterdays once you invest in your now so then you'll be better than you were yesterday. So I want to say to, the, to, to all of those who, families who are still living, of the founding fathers, that we thank you. Today we look at Mr. Honorable R.T. O'Neill. And I will tell my colleagues here someday that it's amazing that I'm still not the oldest person in the House of Assembly, but yet I'm the oldest politician in terms of political age. And it's amazing now for me to be the, the one that the baton has been passed on to, from R.T. O'Neill days to me. And it is very important that when you get it, you run with all your might. Do not look to see whether you got it, whether you, you, you feel that you were behind or what, because it's not only a race, a matter of coming in force. It's a matter of a race of finishing and doing your best so that the generations unborn and those born will be better because you ran your race with grace. You ran your race with all that you had, and you ran your race to being productive so that the present and future generation can fulfill their purpose. I worked with R.T. O'Neill, I knew his passion for education. I knew his passion for H.L. Stowe Community College. Anything else could have fallen along in the territory when it needed money, but not when it came to the police and H.L. Stowe Community College. I, I worked with him in many budgets. They had to get money. And I saw when he was able to carry that branch over to Virgin Garda, how creative he did it. That I myself, who was working with him, didn't even see when the move was made. Because he did it so creative. And before you know it, there was a branch over in Virgin Garda. And he left everyone on the boat scratching their head. How are we going to pay for it? How are we going to get this? You know, the regular talk and, you know, when an when a unconventional move is made. And I was there with him in the meeting. And when we left, I said, Chief, you know, um, the, he just landed just down there and they're wondering how we're going to be paid for. He said, they'll find a way. And I, the Minister of Finance, I'll find a way too. But he said, once it get there, they can't take it out so easy. <laughs> and to not know is history. But it has solved the Virgin Guardians well. But Dr. George said it correctly. Now it's time to look beyond our borders. 
not stop encouraging those who are here, not making sure that we maximize those who are here to use HLSCC. But the truth be told is that our destiny is larger than our current population. Our destiny of HLSCC is waiting on us. And we're going to get there by doing what our forefathers did. Dream big. Dream beyond what they could control. Because if you can control your dreams, that's not, that's not God, that's you. But if you dream big with the help of God, and it's based on a principle like what H.L. Stout did and what Honorable R.T. O'Neill did, and even the help from persons like Mrs. Eileen Parsons and Ms. Lana Smith and all of those who helped to, to create the foundation. But the dream had to be bought through someone. And when H.L. Stout was pregnant with this idea and he delivered, he made sure that he got some caretakers that are going to help this to grow. Can I tell you that you are the modern day caretakers? And can I tell you that the future of the HLSCC does not depend on what happened before? And it does not depend on what's going to happen in the future because it all depends on what you do now. So you cannot see yourself as just an employee. You cannot see yourself as just a board member. You cannot just see yourself as just a student. You cannot just see yourself as just someone who's visiting the HLSCC. You have to see yourself as HLCC, HLSCC. So that when every one of us walk the streets in town, we see HLSCC. And I'm challenging the college, which I told the board, that we want to be like everywhere else in the world, that every store has shorts of HLSCC. We have flags of HLSCC. If we do not help brand and be proud of what we have, then no one else will do it for us. When we fall in love with who we have and gather with all our heart, it will not cheat on us. And it goes the same into regular relationships. It will not deny us success, and it will not deny us prosperity. We have to love HLSCC with all our heart. So from today onward, when we walk through, we want to walk through the BBI and have persons that come in that when they attend the university, they feel HLSCC love. They feel the HLSCC spirit. They feel the HLSCC positiveness because that is what higher education is about, that you will never forget your college experience. And the, the territory realizes that we have a gem because that will help us with the expansion of airports. The more students come in, you have to look at more flights, the better for taxi men, the taxi operators. And I should know because I grew up with a father of taxi for 50 years. The better for the res restaurants, the better for the hotels, the better for the persons who have apartments or those who want to invest in apartments, and the better for the college because then you can now use 130 odd acres that we have made sure that you have received to build some dormitories because then you have the collateral. Do not wait for the perfect because never let the perfect become the enemy of the greater good. You have to move now. Do not wait till everything gets in place because I've never seen anyone build a house when they get everything. I'm in my house now 20 odd years and it's not completed. Don't tell my wife. <laughs> but there's certain parts of it that must function. The water must be running. The lights must be running. The, there must be some kind of telephone inside of it and of course some kind of Wi-Fi. But the one thing that keeps any house running, no matter what you have or don't have, once you have love and unity, it'll run like a well-oiled machine. And that's what you need here at HLSCC, more of. So I implore you, Dr. Georges, and I feel so proud of you as the acting president, one of my former students in high school. Again, teaching him, I'd never know that I'll be here dealing with him now as the acting president. But seeds of success was planted. And when I look at Ms. Fiona Fowles, one of my former students on the board, and when I look and I look at the Minister of Education, one of my former students as Minister of Education, when I was teaching high school, you recognize that you're not living for now. You're living for down the road. 
because you don't know whose lives you're impacted and where they will end up. So now it's their turn now to invest in the future generation now. And I want to tell you that despite all the negative you might hear, today coming from your premier, I want to tell you publicly, I'm proud of each and every one of you on the board and each and every one of you for what you're doing and keep doing. And any time you get wary, remember that the premier told you today, every staff, every board member, the chairman, the, the president, the minister, and everyone that attends the HLSCC, in order to be successful, do not major in the minor. Thank you. Over the years, we've had a number of persons who've served on the college's board. Some of the past, I see past and present here today. So can you stand to be recognized, former and current? <laughs> yes, stop the phone, thank you. <laughs> former and current members of the board who are here this morning, we want to salute you for the work that you've done over the years. We appreciate you, thank you very much. It gives me great pleasure at this time to call on, I think I can safely say one of my fa favorite male singers on island. We go by, way back from him, prime, uh, sorry, Premier's office when he came by some time ago for job training. Chief Minister's office at the time, thank you. And for one of the first um, Gen Y Factor competition finalists, He's here this morning, Mr. Kenrico Wheatley. Can you come to render your selection? You made a way, yeah. Don't know how, but you did it. Standing here. Wondering how we'll get through this test Holding on to faith you know best Everything I need you supply You've got this figured out And you're watching us now And when it looks as if we can't win you wrap us in your arms and step in Everything I need you provide You've got this in control And now we know that you made a way When our backs were against the wall And it looked as if it was over Oh, you made a way and we're standing here only because you made a way you made a way yeah now we're here looking back on where we've come from it's because of you and nothing we've done to deserve the love and mercy you've shown but your grace was big enough to pick us up and you made a way when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over Oh, you made a way And we're standing here Only because you made a way You, you made a way When our backs were against the wall And it looked as if it was over Oh, you you made a way and we're standing here only because you made a way you move mountains 
You cause walls to fall with your power. Perform miracles Impossible And we're standing here Only because you made And we're standing here Only because you made a way And we're standing here only because you made up. And we're standing here only because you made a way. And we're standing here only because you made up. We're standing here. Only because you made us, and we're standing here. Only because you made, and we're standing here. Only because you made a way. Thank you. Many mountains have been moved over the years. And we are grateful to God for making many ways for H. Laverty Stout Community College. Early on, I said that a lot has changed in 30 years, but a lot has changed in one year. Last year, around this time, our next speaker had a different relationship with this institution. He was a lecturer last year. This year, he's a minister. It gives, gives me great pl pleasure to invite my minister, the Honorable Dr. The Honorable Natalia D. Wheatley, Minister for Education, Culture, Youth Affairs, Fisheries, and Agriculture, to come and address you at this time. Let's give uh, Ken Rico another round of applause. Those Wheatleys are very talented people. <laughs> and speaking about Wheatleys, let's give the Honorable Vincent Wheatley, a, a clap for that picture that we saw. Oh, boy. That, that was back in the 60s. Uh, <laughs> it's a cool picture, man. <laughs> Very nice. Um, the interesting thing about speaking last is, is what more can I say? I mean, it has really, <laughs> it has really been said already, and I, I want to recognize the deputy chairman, of the board and the president of uh, acting president of Ace Laverty Stout for those fantastic addresses. Of course, the premier was fantastic, but I'm used to him by now. He, he doesn't need notes or anything, but uh, I mean, just stand for me, please. And I know Dr. Sauda Smith must be beaming with pride, beaming with pride, two of her students. And it really just brings very clearly, you can sit down, just very clearly what we have been saying this morning that in the BVI, we have a lot of talent. We have very intelligent people. We have, we have enough, let me say that. We have enough to be able to drive this territory towards continued success. And institutions such as HLSCC um, true to the vision of the founding fathers and mothers, <laughs> we have to say that it is truly doing wonderful things in our community. I want to, I, yes, I already established a protocol. Hamilton Laval T. Stout had a dream that the British Virgin Islands could have tertiary education delivered from our shores. 30 years ago today, that dream was made a reality with the opening of the H. Laverty Stout Community College. To make this dream a reality, many individuals had to play a part. I thank all the members of the boards over the years for their sterling contributions. The presidents and vice presidents, every administrator, the deans, the faculty, the staff. And I thank every single employee, every single donor, 
every vendor who has contributed to the success of this institution. I also thank the Cripps family who gave up the land for this purpose, and I thank past administrations as well as the present for their commitment to the college. And let me just say that as the Minister of Finance and the Premier, uh, Honorable Andrew Foy has continued the support to this institution uh, that was uh, prominent with, um, God rest his soul, Honorable Ralph O'Neill, uh, member emeritus. And we can expect that to continue. And as Dr. George spoke, I thought to myself, it's a big vision. And I think Honorable Andrew Foy is the perfect person to be in the position of Minister of Finance and Premier at this time because the Premier, he dreams big. You don't have to get him to, 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 to persuade him to, to, to dream big. He dreams big already, and he's not afraid to take chances. He's not afraid to make investments for the future because he, he bets on himself and he bets on the territory. And that's something that I truly appreciate with him. So with, with the, the contributions he made to the marine program so far, and what we're going to see with the, the solar training project, I'm very excited about the future at HLSCC with a man like the Premier at the helm. Give him a round of applause for all of the support he's given to the institu institution. And finally, and most importantly, I, I want to thank the students for having confidence in this institution, in providing them with a quality education to nurture their growth and development, to help them accomplish their dreams. And I see a, a couple students here and you know, with the example of, of persons like Dr. Georges and Mrs. Fiona Forbes Vanterpool, you can see, and many, many, many other persons. I see uh, Jamal Smith uh, in the audience, a past board member, a past student here. And actually, my colleague, who used to be on this uh, television program, <laughs> yeah, way back, I think it was on Channel 3. Was it Channel 3? <laughs> a television program called SLAM that was uh, led by former president, um, Dr. Carl Dawson. And uh, we had um, great times. I never attended H. Laverty Stout Community College. I'm a little sh ashamed to say that right now. Um, but at least with, with a program like SLAM, I was associated with the institution. And of course, I'm so proud to have taught here uh, for 12 years. But the students, I would like for you to be able to see that, envision the future. Uh, see all the possibilities for you as a student at this institution. You know, the, the, the sky is the limit. Your imagination is, 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 is the only limitation to, to what you can contribute to this territory. And certainly want uh, students to always feel the responsibility to be able to give back give back to H. Laverty Stout Community College and give back to this territory. I have to say, Dr. Sauda Smith, I'm not sure if you feel like this as well. I often miss the classroom. <laughs> I miss this institution, uh, the camaraderie with my colleagues, the process of building the institution, and above all, teaching the students. Teaching was one of the most rewarding experiences of my life, and I will cherish my time at HLSCC forever. I serve in a different capacity now, but I am well placed to continue the support of the college. I have been given a mandate by the leader of the territory, Honorable Andrew Foy, to align our education system with our economy, to ensure that HLSCC is facilitating the training needs of present and burgeoning industries. What you see with the marine training program, the solar training program, the Financial Services Institute, and what's happening in hospitality is just the tip of the iceberg. In the months and years to follow, you will notice offerings in agriculture, 
as we prepare for the revitalization of that sector. I'm also eager to explore the possibilities for training in the fishing sector. I've already had some initial conversations and I'm excited to, to bring that to the board. And certainly we can't ignore the need for offerings in technology, fintech, etc. I'm excited about the relationships we are establishing with other institutions around the world. I'm excited about the possibility of getting bachelor's degrees and master's degrees without leaving the shores of the Virgin Islands. The future of HLSCC is very bright, and I look forward to the next 30 years of service to this community and to the region. Happy Founders Day. Good morning, everyone. I was hoping today to kind of fly under the radar, but I keep getting called on, so uh, no luck. Uh, thank you, Madam Mistress of Ceremonies, the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Mrs. Carolyn Stout Igwe, and in the interest of time, I too uh, would like to adopt the protocol already established. I don't usually like to do that, but uh, I wish to thank uh, the very priorities-driven president, uh, acting president, Dr. Georges, and his administrative team, uh, in particular, um, Dr. Bernadine Louis and our amazing 30th anniversary committee for giving me the distinguished honor to propose a vote of thanks on behalf of the alumni, facul former faculty, I former faculty, and the, also the first and former alumnus on the college's board of this most illustrious institution, my beloved alma mater, the H. Laverty Stout Community College, on the occasion of its 30th birthday. First, let me give all praise, honor, and glory to the Almighty God, for all praise and honor is His. For without him, who would not, we wouldn't be here today. And the vision of this institution that every speaker today has spoken about would not have been born. And the hands that toil in the vineyard of scholastic excellence that both the uh, Deputy Chair Vanterpool and Acting President Georges so eloquently spoke about today uh, none of us would have been able to toil in that, and it would have been, a, 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 unfortunately, a disaster for all of us. So we, are, we must be grateful uh, and give thanks to the Almighty, and I wish to thank the, uh, the long-serving faculty member, Sergio Estridge, uh, for the invocation, setting the tone for this year. Uh, we must put God first, and I'm grateful for his, uh, his prayers over this institution and today's proceedings. And I also wish to thank Dr. Steve Leonard, who will shortly give the benediction, ensuring that God goes not only before us, but after us, and is all around us this year. Uh, as an academic institution, though, um, I would be remiss if I didn't say something else. But as an academic institution, though, which, uh, where we are teaching students to broaden their minds, I trust that this institution will become a catalyst for genuine ecumenical dialogue in our community that raises the bar for our Christian council to meet and starting today to prepare for our tomorrow when all the Abrahamic religions can sit in these hallowed halls and share together, and even beyond that, I may be speaking too far ahead, but even beyond that, uh, as our acting president and our premier spoke about, we are intending to bring people from outside our shores, we should also consider uh, ensuring that all our, all faiths, can have an interfaith fellowship on these very grounds. But that may not be in my lifetime. Baby steps. But as I listen to our students, I am heartened that a brighter and more enlightened future for our people 
is on the horizon, fulfilling a vision. I mentioned the Christian Council earlier, and I am grateful that we had a former alumnus, a former alumnus, and reigning Miss BVI, Miss Bri Miss Bria Smith, to sing our national anthem and our territorial song, done tastefully and in the tradition of our people. I must also thank Mrs. Fiona, Mrs. Fiona Forbes Venterpool, former alumnus and current deputy chair of the Board of Governors, for her inspiring remarks. I just need to say something, though. I'm a bit curious. Uh, I noticed on the program I was recognized with attorney before my name and not hers. I suspect um, people are going to forget that I'm an attorney and that's why they, they didn't do that. So um, I think you all need reminding, but that's okay. Uh, especially after today, I don't think you will forget that Mrs. Vanterpool is a star attorney in her own right and we are very grateful for her address today. Let me also thank the Premier and Minister of Finance, Honorable Andrew Arturo Foy, for his commitment to the students of this institution. As an educator himself, he has given birth to several visions, and that seems to be the theme for today. He has given birth to a vision, including one that I'm going to say a little bit about today the 1,000 jobs in 1,000 days. And clearly this college has a critical role to play in ensuring that that vision becomes a reality. His vision also sees us creating a nightlife in the BVI. Now that's an interesting concept because it means there will no longer be any unemployed scooter riders between 6 p.m. and 11 p.m. every night. <laughs> and come to think of it, um, I'm also unemployed between 6 p.m. and 11 p.m. So I thank the Premier for that initiative. Uh, I extend sincere thanks to the Minister of Education, my very good friend, the Honorable Natalia Wheatley, uh, and forgive me, but I am not going through that long list of identifiers. <laughs> I know the minister is very creative. I know him well, and I think he'll someday come up with a better name for that ministry. Uh, that said, this institution too went through a name change from the original BVI Community College and has named its auditorium after someone long connected with this institution and known for her support of the performing arts in the tradition of all great institutions. As such, it is hoped that this great institution will lead the way for a proper naming convention for buildings on its campus. I trust the Minister of Education, etc., etc., will give some policy guidance on where this institution can go with honoring its stalwarts during its 30th anniversary. While I am on the subject of uh, performing arts uh, in this August auditorium, let me thank Mr. Kenrico Wheatley for that uh, amazing rendition. Um, and that is the reason why this auditorium was created and we have seen some amazing performances in this auditorium and I suspect and I hope that in true tradition we will have an amazing event this 30th anniversary. In closing let me say thanks to everyone who has made today an amazing success, um, to all the faculty, staff, um, the students and all the persons who uh, make the H. Laverty South Community College their home um, like I have, as this institution means a lot to me personally, uh, I wish to extend sincere thanks and appreciation, and I hope that everyone has enjoyed these, this founding day ceremony. Thank you, and God bless.
very hard to build this cage, which will protect it from being run over or the errant sheep that might find its way on campus. Uh, we still have work to do to anchor it in place, but even more than the two environmental club students that are here now did help. Uh, we have Travis Thomas, Aki Moses, Curly Grace Oyentinji, uh, Alexia Penn, and Kasia Manahan. Also, special thanks to Matt Holt of the technical studies in the workforce department for helping us cut the wood. Uh, there were a few others that did help. I appreciate everyone's help. Uh, and I think we have a wonderful tree here. It's called an Ylang Ylang, Y-L-A-N-G. It has a very fragrant, um, a very fragrant smell and yellow flowers. So we hope that it will grow and represent our founding day, 30th anniversary. Thank you. Thank you.